You can find the product featured in today's video and many more at Dan's Dinosaurs. Check out his site at the link in the description below and be sure to mention that Killer Shrew fan sent you. Now, on to the review. Hello everyone and welcome back to Killer Shrew Fans Killer Toy Reviews. So it's like this, alright? I recently celebrated my birthday, yes, woohoo and all that. And like last year, I wanted to put together some sort of special review as part of that celebration. You know, something big, something unique, and so originally I was planning to review Nanmu's rearing Brachiosaurus seeing as I ordered that with the express understanding of it being a birthday gift to myself, says the guy who has rarely denied himself anything. I know, I'm so thoughtful. But unfortunately, that isn't how the cookie crumbled, or should I say how the Nanmu Brachiosaurus crumbled, because yeah, when it showed up, this was the sight that greeted my eyes. Yes, despite everyone's best efforts with ensuring safe shipment, except Nan moves, obviously. My luck just was not in this time, and my very expensive, extremely limited edition model showed up with some assembly required. You never think it'll happen to you, broken figures. You think it's something that'll happen to the other guy until it's staring you right in the face. Anyway, as you can see, I managed to Humpty Dumpty her back together again, but the whole thing just left a bit of a bad taste in my mouth. And, and I honestly, I can't even enjoy the figure anymore because of it. One of my subscribers said it best, no matter how good of a job I could have done fixing this thing, it's always going to be broken in my head. So yeah, doing a review of it right now just is not in the cards until I learn to forgive and can appreciate the model once again. That being said, it kind of left me wondering what I should review in honor of my birthday when, lo and behold, a triad of new PNSO figures showed up all throughout the week, including Anthony the Styracosaurus, Li Zhang the Zhu Cheng Tyrannus, and of course the brand new Sintasaurus Zhao Qin. Probably only pronounced one of those names right. Anyway, I figured instead of doing one big review of the Nanmu Brachiosaurus, I would go ahead and do three reviews of smaller figures throughout the coming days, since all of these great new edition showed up pretty close to my birthday, and all in one piece I might add. So buckle in, it's Killer Shrew fans, Killer Toy Reviews, and today we're going to be taking a look at PNSO's new Sintasaurus. Real quick, here's the packaging. It's the standard museum line box with the stark white background framing the glamour shot of the paint master. No text, no logos, no fuss. Just a nice, clear image of the product. Kinda nice, isn't it? The sides of the box bear the figure's name and species, along with the 135 scale indicator and the PNSO logo, all in a metallic gold finish. You've also got all sorts of warnings and legal mumbo jumbo along the short sides, and that's about all there is to the box. The bottom part does come out and form a bit of a base with the PNSO logo as well, but... <sighs> I don't, I don't even know what to say about that. I don't, I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. As far as what else is included, this is a museum line figure after all. You do get a whole envelope stuffed full of posters, note cards, and artwork. As you can see, I haven't even opened mine yet, and I'm not going to do it here. These videos are long enough as is, and I'm sure there are plenty of better YouTubers out there who will go more in depth with this, but I'd rather just not give it the time of day. I mean, a little booklet and one poster. That's enough. Usually I can find one or two little things in these envelopes that I really like, but beyond that, it is just a waste of space and resources. I get what they're going for. Every museum worth its salt has diagrams and info blurbs next to their mounts and statues, but I'm not fixing to set up a mini museum here. I don't have the space for that. I just want a cool dinosaur figure to put on my shelf. That's it. You've also got the addition of this gray plastic base, sort of reminiscent of the old ones they used for their big vinyl figures, but this <laughs> is really unnecessary here. I mean, it's a quadrupedal figure, for cripe's sake. If you want to do a base, 
to up the value of your product, fine, I love bases, but go all in. Make something actually worthwhile, even if it's just a repaint or repack of one of your old sculpted bases, but this doesn't really cut it as a noteworthy bonus for the price tag. I guess on a positive note, there are openings in the base, so you're able to insert those plastic rods that come with some of the bipedal and marine creatures, and that can definitely be useful and look pretty decent, especially with the PNSO logo up there, but uh, for the Sintau source itself, it is lipstick on a pig. So yeah, if you couldn't tell, I'm none too thrilled with what the museum lines become. Smaller and smaller figures, no more sculpted bases that create a scene and story out of time, just a bunch of fluff to justify that steady price tag of 60 plus dollars. I'm sure you can blame some of that on inflation and various factors putting pressure on the market, but when the same company is also making bigger figures that are almost equally lovely for 18 to 20 dollars less? Yeah, that's a pretty good indicator that the premium line is now obsolete and an excuse for PNSO to charge more. As much as I love the premium looking boxes, they're not essential and I have no doubt in my mind that if Zhao Qin came in a prehistoric animal box, it would cost $40 tops. But enough negative talk, let's get to the figure itself and wow. Yeah, credit where credit is due, this thing is a Stunner of a piece. I mean, PNSO have always been consistently strong with their hadrosaurs, but they seem to find ways to up the game with each new release. This Sintausaurus is no exception, boasting even crisper details on top of updated anatomy and one of the best paint jobs we've seen from the company yet. A closer look at the head shows just how fine the sculpt work is, with minuscule scales adorning these soft areas of the face. Meanwhile, hard features like the keratinous beak and crest boast subtle wear and texture that give them a nice, worn, and lived-in appearance. We'll talk about the crest here in a minute, but first, there are a couple of other features I want to touch on. As you can see, this figure continues in PNSO's trend of balking basically all extra oral tissue, including cheeks, instead falling more in line with Nabaviza Day's recent reconstructions of buccal anatomy in Ornithischian dinosaurs. We saw this on their Iguanodon, and now it looks like it is here to stay. Something I'm glad to see carry over from the promo images is the splash of red adorning the soft tissue around the nostrils. Not only does it add some visual interest, but it also also seems to suggest some sort of display feature in the form of inflatable nasal air sacs. You know, something like this. <laughs> Classic. One thing I'm not a big fan of on this head though would be the jet black shark eyes. I've never really liked dot painted eyes. I can't help but feel like it does cost the figure some extra character and life, but then again, it is a very small surface area, so anything else might not have been feasible. Now for the crest. You can see that it boasts the updated reconstructions where the iconic um, unicorn horn-esque extension now makes up the rear margin of a more standard crest formed from the inclusion of the extended premaxillary bones. Although a sophomoric part of me will always miss the <clears throat> unicorn reconstruction, it's nice to finally have an updated figure of the animal, and one that's a little more appropriate. Seriously, whose idea was this? The crest itself is beautifully colored, if only slightly less vibrant than the promo images. I love the subtle fade between the lime green, yellow, and orange with the jet black rim. The application is so pleasing to the eye, and it makes for a striking display feature that puts me in mind of a toucan's bill. So yes, overall, the head of this figure is a slam dunk. Moving on, another update you'll see here is a properly beefed up neck in line with Bertozzo's 2020 paper on Parasaurolophus neck anatomy. I was willing to overlook it on PNSO's para, seeing as the paper came out mere months before the final figure was revealed, but it is great to see this finally realized on a model. The details here are also just absolutely insane, with incredibly fine wrinkles bunching up over the tensing muscles as the head lifts upward and turns slightly to the left. This has then been covered in a mosaic of tiny scales. The same can then be said across the body. You've got great muscle tones on the midsection and bulging at the lift in the tail, as well as all sorts of delicate skin folds and areas of tension forming with the motion of the appendages.
All of this has then been covered in more subtle scales with islands of larger scales cropping up here and there across the board. I don't know how, but PNSO continues to make their detail work more and more lifelike. This, this honestly looks like real skin. As far as the limbs go, the neck wasn't the only thing that got beefed up. The front legs are very robust, much like last year's Parasaurolophus. The muscle tones have all been beautifully rendered, and you can see more great skin detailing forming with the bends of the joints. The front hands feature the hoof-like mittens encasing the digits, with the quote-unquote pinky left free and clawless. Meanwhile, the back legs are very muscular, complete with some extremely powerful looking calves and thick ankles. Moving along the underside, you can see the areas where all the skin is gathering beneath the gullet and down around the belly. And if we make our way back past the base of the tail, you'll see this dinosaur does boast a cloaca. There's a good look at that. Now stop looking at it, you perv. So that's the sculpt on this thing, and boy is it a doozy. It shows PNSO continuing to embrace new information and ideas, and somehow managing to continuously outdo themselves when it comes to sculpting their soft tissue. Equally important to a great sculpt, though, is a great paint job, and boy oh boy did PNSO not disappoint here. It's true, one of their biggest shortcomings, outside of the price tags, would be their sometimes repetitive color schemes and the ability to maintain the quality of the paint master in the final products. Sometimes it's more noticeable than others, but their hadrosaurs have actually fared pretty well in both regards, offering very unique color schemes between themselves and unique to anything else PNSO has done. Well, Xiao Qin here is quite possibly the best yet of any figure. The rich palette of the promo images seems to have been as faithfully captured as possible on the mass-produced figure. Although the contrast might be a bit more muted in the colors, the general idea is 100% there, and captured with subtle fades and transitions between greens and yellows and browns and even striking blue highlights within the dorsal markings. The subtlety in the application gives it the appearance of actual subcutaneous pigmentation, which is always key for me in selling the realism of a paint job. I'm almost reminded of the color scheme of the Buck Rex when looking at this thing, and honestly, I love that. Overall, I cannot praise the paint job enough, and it's easily one of my favorites, if not my all-time favorite from PNSO to date. So the sculpt is yet another triumph from PNSO, and the paint is immaculate for this kind of thing. But then we come to what's really holding it back. The size. The figure measures a meager 8.7 inches or 22 centimeters long along the spine and stands not quite 3.5 inches off the ground or right around 8.5 centimeters, making it one of the smallest museum line offerings to date. To make matters worse, it's clearly not in the advertised 135 scale range. Sintasaurus has been estimated to be between 27 and 33 feet in length, which would actually put this figure in the 137 to 145 scale range, depending on how high of an estimate you adhere to. And that's disappointing. If you were really hoping for that 135 scale, for the upper estimates, you'd need near an additional 3 inches in length. And perhaps if they had gone for that larger size, then maybe... Maybe the combination of a bigger, beautiful figure with a great paint job would have been enough to justify the high price tag. But as you'll soon see, the small size really does cripple its appeal. For comparisons, let's take a look at some of PNSO's other hadrosaurs. First up, here it is alongside the recently reviewed Ivan, the Allure Titan. Now, Ivan here was released as part of the prehistoric animal line and cost just under $40. But as you can see, the figure is much larger than Xiao Qin here, and although perhaps not as beautifully painted, still boasts its own gorgeous color scheme and application. 
We then have Wyatt, last year's amazing Parasaurolophus. This actually earned the number one spot on my list for best scientific model of 2021. I like it that much. And as you can see, he quite literally dwarfs the Centaurosaurus here. And for roughly $18 cheaper, I might add. Again, the paint on Zhao Qin is obviously superior, but that doesn't make Wyatt's color scheme bad by proxy, just slightly less involved. We also have Caroline, the Corythosaurus, again boasting a larger size and her own vibrant and intricate color scheme. Now obviously, Zhao Qin can at least stand, so there's that, but then again, I want my figures to balance no matter what the price tag is, and I don't think $18 more for an insured stable figure is worth it. As a final Hadrosaur comparison, here it is with Audrey the Lambiosaurus, which cost I think it was around $23 to $25 back in the day. Again, the size goes to the Lambiosaurus, but the paint job, yeah, that one obviously goes to the Centaurosaurus, and by a wide margin, I might add. Still, for about a $40 difference? You kinda just expect that. It's when the margin starts to narrow, when the gap in quality starts to narrow, that that extra cash really becomes a big ask. The point I'm trying to make in all this is that Zhao Qin, though beautiful, only has the slightest edge on his best competition due to his gorgeous paint and updated anatomy. But I don't see why that has to come with the trade-off of a decently sized figure. To sort of nail the point home, here's Zhao Qin with Harvey the Iguanodon. Now, Zhao Qin obviously has the superior paint job once again, but Harvey is also a fair bit larger than the plucky Centaurosaurus. These figures cost the exact same, so it feels like PNSO is making us choose between size or paint that actually matches the promo images when it comes to these museum line figures. And I'm here to say, that's BS. If you can make such gorgeous figures that only cost $30 to $45, then you really better be giving us something extra incredible for the more premium line. Bigger figures, better paint. And that just hasn't been happening lately. There hasn't been a single museum line figure in recent memory I find vastly superior in both paint and sculpt to the standard prehistoric animal line. And trying to balance that out with posters and lazy bases doesn't do anything to ease the glaring issue. Sure, this Centaurosaurus comes close to an actual premium looking figure, but they really let it down in the size department. At this point, I think the museum line better step up or step out because $60 for something like this when bigger, cheaper models that look nearly as nice is one hard ask. That being said, I do like how all of these hadrosaurs look together and I applaud PNSO for continuing to offer us a diverse array of both fan favorite dinosaurs and criminally underrepresented species in model form. Here's hoping they continue with it, hopefully with some long overdue sore loafing figures. So that was PNSO, Centaurosaurus, Zhao Qin, and yeah, this is a hard one to nail down. On one hand, it is beautiful, with a pitch-perfect sculpt and gorgeous paint job. On the other, it's just insulting that PNSO thought they could throw such a small figure into a massive box with a bunch of posters and a lame attempt at a display base and ask for $20 more than they usually do. Despite its obvious merits, this is a $40 figure tops. And a lot of that is thanks to the paint job. If they had made it just a little bit bigger or included an actual base, then maybe, maybe I wouldn't feel so sick with myself for ordering it at list price. That being said, I do love Hadrosaurs and PNSO has helped to solidify the group as one of my favorites. And the fact that it is so criminally underrepresented did help to sway me. Still, I think it's really going to depend on how far you are willing to go for such a beautiful model. Is it one of PNSO's best? Yes, easily. But does that make it worth $60? Is a slightly improved paint job on an overall smaller figure worth the price hike? Well, that's up to you to decide. If you really want to know my thoughts, I would say this figure is definitely worth picking up. Just wait till it's at least 30% off and let PNSO you're not going to overpay for a bunch of fluff. With that in mind, I think my official rating is still Dino Might. Just 
with a massive caveat. Dynamite, but only at a really dynamite sale price. As always though, I wanna know what you guys think of this figure. Does the great sculpt and paint make up for the small size and justify the price tag? Or are you more like me and think this is the straw that broke the museum lines back? Leave all your thoughts below and as always, thank you so much for tuning in to today's review. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you stay tuned for the next one. Until then, take care out there and bye bye